civics lecture. I'm Dr. Farwaz Ahmad. Uh, in this lecture, we will uh, uh, talk about the third for obliquid drop uh, model. This is the third portion of the lecture at liquid drop uh, model. So in this lectures, uh, we will discuss about uh, the beta stability of the uh, nucleus. So uh, we will start with the uh, equations uh, for uh, the binding energy. Uh, and these equations, uh, uh, we will do some calculations uh, for uh, the mass. I mean, we will get some uh, quadratic equation, and then on the basic of that quadratic equations, uh, we will talk that how uh, I mean the beta decay, uh, beta negative, beta positive decay, how uh, we can get a stable uh, nucleus according to uh, according to liquid drop uh, model. So let's start uh, our discussions uh, from this mathematical step. I mean, we have these equations for uh, the mass of a particular nucleus. And last time we discussed about these equations, that is uh, the mass of the nucleus uh, is equal to uh, the total mass of the proton plus total mass of the neutrons minus the binding energy divided by uh, the C square. So how we do the simplification? Let's uh, let's do uh, each and every mathematical step, uh, but it should be a bit quick. I mean, for the detail, you have to have a close look uh, and the book. I mean, the full detail is given inside the book. Here, we just we will give uh, some of the step, and for further understanding, uh, you need to do the practice. I mean, the practice is very much important for understanding all the mathematics. So what actually we do, uh, we multiply uh, both sides of the equations, I mean uh, this side and this side by the value of the c square. So we get, uh, we modify, uh, we modify uh, this equation as uh, mc square equal to uh, z, I mean the total mass, uh, uh, total mass per proton plus total mass of the neutrons uh, whole multiplied by c square minus uh, the binding energy. Uh, so what actually we do uh, here we uh, put from uh, semi empirical mass formula from semi empirical mass formula here we put the values uh, values for the binding energy that is uh, the values for the binding energy just like we discussed in previous term we have a contribution to the binding energy from the volume terms from surface terms from uh, Coulomb's term, uh, that, that's why we call that Coulomb energy terms. Uh, we have asymmetry term and we have uh, the pairing term. So all these terms, they are being uh, uh, classified or being uh, combined in binding energy. So here, instead of binding energy, that is the uh, E with the subscript B, it means the, uh, the binding energy term. Uh, so for this, uh, we put the values. We put these values here. And again, by putting this value, we do some uh, simplifications. I mean, it's a, uh, a bit step mathematical uh, mathematics, but if you do it in a sequence, so it's very, very easy. I mean, uh, we simplify it like this. I mean, so, uh, we have all the terminologies. I mean, we open the bracket, uh, we apply, we multiply the negative sign inside. I mean, it's some sort of uh, basic mathematics, uh, which can easily be understandable. So the simplifications uh, uh, continue. Uh, that is, uh, we carry each uh, uh, each and every step uh, very carefully. Then uh, we get, in the end, we get this. Uh, I mean, uh, quadratic equation. I mean, how we reach these quadratic equations. So here you can see it by yourself. We have a seminal terminology. Uh, so these, these similar terminologies, uh, uh, they are being, uh, I mean, uh, we, have, uh, we have put some uh, uh, values as a constant, uh, that is in term of the K, and some of them uh, we noted by P, and uh, uh, some of them as uh, a Q. Uh, I mean, when, when you, uh, you, you drew it by yourself, so I mean, uh, you will easily understand it by yourself. Here, this particular term, I mean, you can see that uh, we given it a constant uh, that is a constant uh, p and here this particular term that is i mean with z this particular term uh, this this is we denoted by uh, with a constant q uh, while uh, this whole uh, whole energy term uh, this whole energy term that we denoted by constant uh, by constant k 
so this is uh, uh, the mass uh, the mass of that particular nuclei with, with which we have started so uh, what is it uh, it's basically uh, uh, a quadratic uh, equations where uh, uh, the number of protons are a constant value of the uh, nucleons let me repeat it again in this particular equation uh, this particular equation is basically a quadratic equations or number of uh, protons for a constant value of the uh, nucleons so if we differentiate this quadratic equations uh, that is uh, dm uh, dm by uh, dz and equate it to zero uh, we will be able to find uh, the minimum number of protons uh, that is uh, the most stable nuclei uh, in the uh, parabola the parabola we, we will discuss it on the uh, the next slide uh, so uh, we take that uh, as a problem that is uh, we trying to uh, uh, solve uh, the problem that is uh, 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 i mean so what we have discussed that uh, that if we uh, i mean uh, we get we have the equations and uh, we say that we can find the stable nuclei in the parabolic form uh, but if we differentiate the, the the equations, I mean the equation that we have last slide. So we have the problem, and that problem we have to solve. What we have to solve? What? Uh, it's been asked to, to calculate uh, the atomic uh, number of most stable nucleus for a given mass number uh, a. Uh, what will be uh, what will be the most stable isobar for a is equal to uh, 42? That is for atomic mass equal to of 42 so uh, let me repeat the fact uh, again that is uh, in last slide here we guess uh, a formula uh, in the form of equation quadratic equations in the form of quadratic equations we get uh, the formula uh, we get an equation for the mass and here we say that it's a quadratic equations uh, what is that for a constant value of a that is constant uh, value of uh, mass number so uh, if we depreciate this quadratic equations and equate it to zero we will be able to find uh, the minimum uh, atomic number uh, which is the most stable nuclei uh, in the parabola so this this fact for this fact uh, we first consider a problem and then uh, we're trying to uh, find out the solution and as for the solutions uh, we observe this particular fact which we are mentioning here so let uh, solve the problem the problem is uh, to calculate the atomic number of the most stable nucleus for a given mass number a so uh, what will be the most stable isobar for atomic mass equal to uh, 42 so here you have uh, the formula uh, for the minimum uh, the formula for a minimum atomic number and here you, you know about uh, you already know about all these uh, facts and all these uh, sample which been utilized in this uh, formula so uh, for attaining the stability i mean we have this formula and this formula for attaining the stability what actually we have to do uh, uh, elements with the lower uh, proton number or with the lower z will decay through beta negative so what it mean beta negative uh, it's mean that reducing one neutron to a uh, protons uh, increasing atomic number uh, z by one let me repeat it again uh, element with lower z or with lower number of protons will decay through uh, beta negative so what happened du during uh, new, uh, beta negative decay uh, during neta, uh, beta negative decay, I mean, uh, we will have reductions in one neutrons and an increment in the number of the protons. That is, uh, through beta negative decay, we are reducing one neutron to a protons and increasing atomic number uh, by uh, one. So, element with higher atomic uh, atomic number. Uh, and the mass parabola will decay through uh, beta positive uh, that is atomic electron capture uh, by which a proton will turn to a neutron uh, reducing atomic number by uh, one 
I mean, this is, uh, I mean, so we started from, uh, I mean, we have a parab uh, parabolic structures and parabolic structures from one side, uh, we start with a, a lower mass number, uh, sorry, with a lower uh, uh, number of protons or a uh, uh, lower number of protons. And for higher element, we start with higher number uh, of the proton. So the lower number we increase uh, to beta negative decay, that is we are converting neutrons to a protons uh, and we move toward the stability. And for the element of higher atomic number, uh, we reduce the number of protons to beta positive decay, that is we are converting a proton to the neutrons. So we get a parabolic shape. Uh, uh, we get a parabolic shape and uh, uh, there we reach uh, to a particular uh, uh, stable nuclei that we are interested in. So therefore, we can make a plot of mass versus uh, the atomic number or number of protons at a constant atomic mass as shown below to obtain the most stable nucleus among the isobar. I mean, this you can see it here. I mean, we started here and uh, from the iodine, that is, uh, we start uh, in the case of a uh, smaller atomic number, that is a smaller mass. Uh, so here, uh, the smaller mass, we have taken the, uh, the iodine and from iodines, uh, we proceed toward uh, beta uh, with beta negative decay. So here you can see that uh, iodine has atomic mass equal to 53. So when beta negative uh, decay occur, uh, so we get an increase in the atomic number, that is the number of the proton. So we get the atomic mass, uh, the atomic number. Uh, 54 that is xenon and then we get I mean further in beta negative decay we get cesium atomic mass 55 and for further beta negative decay uh, we reach to uh, barium which is a stable isotope uh, stable isomer with atomic number 56 so if we start with the, the higher atomic mass uh, uh, higher atomic number uh, that is uh, cesium a uh, cerulean uh, we, we start with the high atomic number uh, cerulean uh, that is uh, which has the atomic number uh, 58 and uh, we say that beta positive decay occur so beta positive decay uh, first beta positive degree decay we get the atomic number 57 that is a uh, lanthanum uh, lanthanum 57 uh, which when further uh, decay uh, with beta positive decay so we get the barium uh, 56 and that is how we reach the stable nuclei uh, uh, with the mass uh, with the uh, number of uh, protons equal to uh, 56 I mean this is how we get a stable nuclei uh, with the atomic number equal to uh, 56 and that that is the uh, I mean so when we do the process so we come like a parabola uh, I mean, we get a plot for atomic mass versus uh, uh, atomic number. I mean, this is the stable nuclei. This is how we reach uh, uh, mass parabola for uh, atomic mass equal to uh, 135. I mean, both the xerelium and anium, uh, they are both uh, the isomer, uh, the isomer for each other. And that's how we get the, uh, the stable nuclei uh, for, uh, in these particular conditions. Uh, so the process uh, can be represented the beta decay process, uh, both the beta decay process, I mean, uh, we discuss about, uh, that is how from the lower mass, uh, from the lower atomic number, we reach to higher atomic number, and from higher atomic number, uh, we reach to a lower atomic number. The, I mean, all these process for the beta decay is shown here. That is when we have uh, beta negative decay, so in case of beta negative decay, we get an increase in the uh, number of the, Protons, so atomic number increases by one. Along that, we have protons and uh, neutrino. Uh, that is, uh, we get uh, uh, anti neutrino. And uh, in this particular conditions, uh, we have uh, neutrons. And that neutrons, they are being converted into protons uh, with the electrons and uh, electrons uh, neutrino. Or uh, we say that uh, uh, anti neutrino. So when beta decay occurs, when beta decay, uh, beta positive decay, the atomic uh, number is decreases by one. 
so during the beta decay we get positrons and along with positrons we have neutrino in this particular conditions uh, we say protons they're being converting into neutrons uh, and uh, along with that we have positrons and uh, a neutrino pair it one what what are the advantages of liquid drop model uh, so we discuss uh, uh, about the liquid drop model so this kind of models uh, uh, i mean uh, we summarizes uh, some of the advantages some of the key advantages of the liquid drop of model uh, which are uh, uh, this kind of nucleus uh, uh, i mean uh, especially importance uh, this kind of nucleus uh, i mean uh, this kind of models uh, it's only makes sense for uh, uh, for the nuclei with the atomic mass equal to or greater than uh, 20. Uh, along with that, it's a good fit for uh, larger uh, atomic masses that is good to uh, smaller than 1% in most places. Uh, deviations are interesting that is uh, we can uh, that can lead to the shell effect. Uh, Coulomb term constants uh, agree with the uh, calculations. Uh, explain the value of the stability uh, i mean for that we have to uh, i mean so we have to have a clear look in the coming lectures uh, along with that it is planned uh, energetics of the reactivity case that is uh, fissions and uh, fusions so uh, that's all uh, we have for this lecture and the last lectures uh, we will discuss about uh, disadvantages or shortcomings of the uh, liquid drop models. Uh, till then, bye bye.